think I made music. Welcome back, DP Review TV viewers. Chris Nichols here from DP Review TV, and today we're looking at the XT3, but it's a final production version now. If you want to see our sort of first impressions, controls, handling, design, that kind of stuff, please check out, if you haven't already, our X-T3 first impressions video. But because we've already covered all that stuff, today we're primarily looking at the stuff we're interested in that's now going to be affected by full production software. So we're talking about autofocus performance, especially low light in this area here. We're also talking about things like dynamic range, low light performance of the sensor itself, image quality, and those kind of things. So join us today. We're going to flesh out the X-T3, a camera that we were already initially very excited about. Let's see if it holds up with final firmware. So before we get too far into the review here on the X-T3, I do want to mention the beautiful space that we find ourselves in because we've had special access here. First off, thank you so much because we're at Studio Bell. It's the home of the National Music Center and they've been very kind to let us shoot here. It is very low light, but that'll be a great test for the X-T3. And I've got zero musical talent whatsoever and slight photographic talent. So hopefully I can pull something out of this interesting space today, but it's going to be a great treat for you there at home to see this amazing place that we have here in the heart of Calgary. So we've got a fitting location here to talk about low light performance on the X-T3, but first I want you to just take a look at the lab results here. Have a look while I'm talking about it. So you might be surprised to find that this brand new sensor, this new x sensor in the X-T3 actually has on a per pixel level slightly worse performance at high ISO than the older X-T2. So that seems like a backward step, but keep this in mind. This is a brand new sensor. We're getting a couple more megapixels, and most importantly, we're getting that proper new hybrid autofocus phase detect system. This not only gives us better autofocus performance in general, but actually much better performance in low light situations. So we consider it a worthy trade-off. So just got to stop here and mention, this is a custom built drum kit for Neil Pert from the band Rush. Uh, he played his own version of uh, Hockey Night in Canada, an iconic thing. I'm stopping here because it's pretty much the most Canadian thing that you will ever see, ever. And on that terrible note, let's go to a real drummer, Jordan, playing here on the drums, because it was a really good test for us to check out rolling shutter. So photographically first, I want to talk about this. When you use electronic shutter, it's all gonna depend on how fast your sensor scans, whether you're gonna get a nice natural semblance of motion in those verticals or weird bendy stuff. And as you can see here, I shot electronic shutter, 500th of a second, and Jordan's drumsticks are very well controlled. You see a little bit of movement, but as cameras go, this is exceptionally good. Now, if you look at the video examples here, again, this is great. Any videographer who wants to do walk and talks, handheld stuff, or sweep the camera, or if you are shooting things like drumming or golf, you know, anything where you have these strong verticals that are moving quickly, you often get a really annoying jello effect and this is all eliminated in a very controlled manner. This is definitely on par with what we'd see with a lot of the high-end Panasonic video cameras that we use. They have smaller sensors and very fast scan rates so it's a testament to this new sensor that Fuji is able to pull this off. So videographers are going to love this new feature. If you're shooting weddings or movie set work where you have to be silent you're going to love this feature as well. All in all it's a big step up for Fuji and now I will drum you up. That was almost as good as the ending of Whiplash. Now, as good as the autofocus is, by far the most exciting feature is gonna be the eye detect autofocus. I mean, this is a really nice feature. A lot of other companies are adding these, but only in a very still situation where your subject doesn't move. Now, the Fuji can handle moving subjects, much like the Sony's can. It means you can compose your frame however you want, have the face in the shot, and know that the pupil should be where the target is. Now, if you're doing some more intense stuff like sports or action, or even just very simple family stuff like kids running around in the house very quickly, we found that the Sony in our opinion does have a slightly higher hit rate, but the Fuji does a great job. Real downside on the Fuji X-T3 for eye detect autofocus, it doesn't work with dead mouse. 
All right, so for this next part, I'm coming to you from inside a recording booth because, you know, the National Music Center's got a lot of music playing, and this is a good example of just the audio tone that you're going to get. We like to record on Rode Filmmaker Labs just with the stock microphone and rye coat undercovers, but we often have to record either with the Panasonic, which has its own great preamps, or with other cameras into external recorders, and that's a real pain. Now, what's great about the X-T3 is you have a beautiful preamp built into the camera. Jordan would never put a microphone straight into camera unless it's the Panasonic that we use, or in this particular case, the X-T3, which he really enjoys the quality of. So with this appropriate backdrop, let's just touch on the dynamic range findings now on the new sensor with the X-T3. So compared to the older sensor, this is dropping the base ISO from 200 down to 160. So we are finding an improvement, albeit a small one, in dynamic range. Okay, you're getting that third stop EV improvement. However, oddly enough, when you get up to the higher ISOs, you know, as you approach 6400 and beyond, as we've said, we find that you actually lose some of that dynamic range compared to the older sensor. You're going to find these are subtle differences, but just keep that in mind. Slightly better at low base ISOs, but then slightly worse at the higher ones. All right, so when it comes to our autofocus findings, pretty similar to the pre-production, but let's just kind of give you the rundown that we found. So first off, the X-T3 is by far the most capable focusing Fuji camera, and it really comes down to that 425 point phase detect autofocusing system. We find that the points for lock-on tracking are, are way stickier. The camera can go anywhere across the field to focus, and so these are really big improvements, but this is still what we kind of found. I mean, zone focusing, wide tracking, they still work really well if they suit your subject. Now when it comes to eye autofocus, I mean again, we love that Fuji is giving you full continuous eye autofocus movement. It is quite effective. We still did have some issues though where the camera decided to focus on something other than a face. Certainly a garbage can was a topic in our first video. Here I had it focusing on ceilings and stuff like that for no reason. So you might not find it's always the most reliable in a really intense situation. But if you're taking portraits, kids walking around, slower action and stuff, I think for a lot of weddings it'd be good too. It will do a great job. Now, when it comes to face detect and eye autofocus capabilities, there's one thing I want to mention here. So first off, you can customize it. I mean, you can set which eye you want it to go for as a priority. You can also, of course, turn it completely off, or you can have face detect, but without eye autofocus engaged. But the one thing I will say is that when you have multiple faces on there, you can't really swap easily between them, okay? The camera will detect other faces in the scenario, but it really wants to decide and take over what face to focus on. I found if I move the camera to put something more central, it will then maybe lock onto that face instead, but it's not really under my control. I would still probably say if you've got multiple people in the scene, whichever one's closest and central is probably going to get the priority. If you want to pick other faces, that's where you might want to go back to single point touchscreen or some other solution. But overall, the autofocus on the X-T3 is very capable, and I think this camera could easily handle weddings, events, sports, wildlife, journalism, or just casual shooting, as long as you set it up to behave for those right scenarios. So this next part here has nothing to do with the Fuji X-T3. This is really for the music nerds out there. In fact, I don't need this anymore. So I'm sitting here in front of Tonto, which stands for the original new Tambral Orchestra. This is an amazing piece. I mean, Stevie Wonder used this on his albums. This found its way into Devo Studios as well, and it's just an amazing piece of music history, and we have it right here in the uh, National Music Center here in Calgary. All right, so that does it for our time here at Studio Bell, home of the National Music Center, and we're going to punch over to Jordan to do video, but I just want to mention we had a ton of fun here having access like this. It was really exciting, and if you guys are in the Calgary area, definitely come down here, have a look at all the exhibits, play with some musical instruments, learn a lot actually about Canadian history, which is a big surprising part of it. I know you'll have a great time, but let's get go to Jordan, talk about video next. My God, skin tones and color and contrast. I just, I'm sorry, I just, I get lost looking at this X-T3 straight out of camera footage. 
In our X-T3 preview episode, I talked about a lot of the things that initially really impressed me, but now I've shot three episodes of the show with this, all of them in kind of a different situation. The X-T3 preview was quite high contrast. I had to use log recording for some of that. I also did a lit interior for the GFX video and a low light shoot in the National Music Center today, and I have been continuously impressed with the quality of the output from this camera. You can see an episode that I'll link to below where I compared the 10-bit 420 from this camera to the 10-bit 422 from Panasonic GH5, which I would say is the most comparable camera to it. And you can see there's not too much of a difference, but if you are looking for a little bit higher quality, you can put on an external recorder and get 10-bit 422 out of this camera all the way up to 60p. But as well as that, the autofocus I've found very reliable. I'm using face detect right now. I've primarily been shooting people with this camera, so it's been on face detect a lot of the time. And for that, I've found it's very consistent, very minimal wobbling. Now, if you're recording something other than faces, you can use the joystick and select the focus point. Keep that on your subject and the camera will do a great job. But this is the one real letdown of the autofocus. I'd love to see something like what Canon does with dual pixel autofocus or Nikon Z7 does, where you can just tap your subject and the camera will continuously follow them. That's hopefully something Fuji can add in firmware because the autofocus system on this is clearly very sophisticated. One other thing I like is that there's completely separate exposure if you use the silent movie controls on this. If you're shooting video, you can set the exposure with the touch screen. Now, I'm not a huge fan of how those actually operate. I find it's a little cumbersome to use the touch screen to set things like your exposure. But once you jump back to photo mode, all those physical dials are still going to retain their settings. So that makes it really easy for you to have a nice slow shutter speed for video and not have it completely screw up your photo settings. Looking at the quality coming out of the X-T3, whether you're shooting 24, 30, or 60 frames per second, I found it's very clean, very sharp image that doesn't look over sharpened. I also really like the quality of the 120 frame per second. Now it's not quite as sharp as your standard frame rate 1080, but by super sampling slightly, there is a bit of a crop that you need to be aware of, but that also means that the image is quite sharp. It doesn't have a lot of the moiré and aliasing that we've gotten used to seeing with the high-speed recording on the Sony and Panasonic cameras. Now, the biggest drawback to the X-T3 really isn't this camera specifically, but more other cameras Fuji recently brought to market, starting with the X-T100, which brought out a flip screen where you could still see yourself in the frame. That would be wonderful right now. I'm having to use an external monitor to check my shot. Also, the X-H1 came out, and that debuted Fuji's in-body image stabilization, which I would love to see on this. Now, if neither of those cameras had been released, we'd be amazed with what's come out here. But as is, it really feels like there's a couple things missing. I'm hoping Fuji will release an X-H2 quickly with both of those features that'll rectify this. After using this camera for three shoots, the thing that really stands out is that if you want to get your feet wet with video, this is an almost perfect tool. You've got that image that doesn't require a lot of processing. You've got autofocus that you can rely on, and you can even just plug a mic directly into it with the improved preamps, and you're going to get nice usable audio. It's a very simple, streamlined package that you can get unbelievably professional results from. There are certainly some drawbacks to it, but in general, I think this is one of the strongest video mirrorless out there, and considering that Fuji camera were garbage for video only a few years ago. This is an amazing accomplishment. So what we have here is a camera very similar to the X-T2 taking everything that was great about that camera, the smart looks, the nice controls, the customizability and handling, but then tuning everything to make it as competitive as possible for this modern age of cameras. The X-T3 has very significant upgrades. I mean, first off, it starts with things like that brand new EVF. It's more usable, it's gorgeous, but at the heart of it, it still comes down to a brand new sensor with amazingly fast readout, as well as a fourth gen new processor. This is what's giving us the tweaked autofocus on this camera, and it really is that much better. They've improved their algorithms for the eye autofocus and just completely rewritten them to make them actually work now effectively. We've got now the best coverage we've ever had on an XT camera, and so all in all, this camera is capable of handling any kind of photography that you throw at it. And really the only negative thing that I can think about on this camera is going to be its lack of in-body image stabilization. 
Whether you think it's super important or not, I love it and I think for photography and videography, it's a big benefit. So it looks like if you really want that feature, we're gonna have to wait for the X-H2 to get the same capabilities in a camera. But still, the X-T3 is just this fantastic APS-C camera that competes on so many levels. It's great for anybody who wants to do photography or maybe you wanna start getting into videography. Either way, we think the X-T3 is probably the best all-rounded APS-C camera on the market. But if you want full-frame image quality, quality that is certainly valid and it's not that far off in price point. You could look at something like the Nikon Z6 or absolutely the Sony a7 III for not that much more money and then you're getting to that full frame territory. Still, I feel the X-T3 is probably the best rounded camera if you want to handle many different kinds of photography and video work as well. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this second look at the X-T3 and its image quality. Don't forget, subscribe to our channel, comment below, go to our Instagram and Twitter feeds, let us know what you think there. But until next time, hope Hope you enjoyed this review. We'll be back with many more.